Welcome to this garage episode. This is probably the first video I ever shot in my garage and the shaking, the audio is just awful. But I will do the best I can to make it worth your while. So my doors was in a pretty horrible state and I got a failure on the MOT. The failure was on the window framing, so that's what I'm focused on here because I'm getting the car ready for our next trip. That trip would be the first Overland series that we made on Land Rover Drive and you will find a link to the series in the description. So I'm starting out with this simple square and working my way from there. Next thing was to check that the dimensions was correct to the missing metal in the door framing. Then do the first bend. And this is a gift from my wife. Simple but good bender. So checking the dimensions. And trimming off the edges to make it fit. Here I'm marking off the first bend and I'm marking on the top and also on the bottom because there's a slight difference. The good thing about using a bender is that the bend gets really straight. So if you're wondering why I haven't bolted it stuck to my bench, is that I like to move it away when I'm not using it. So I can use the bench for other stuff. Since there's a difference uh, in the depth of the first bend on the top and on the bottom. I'm double checking that the bend is done the correct way. So that's why I'm turning around, is to look at the door, making sure that I bend it the right way. Not bending too much. I want to check the angle before I bend anymore. The angles are not 90 degrees. So it's good to double check. So you don't have to bend it back again. It's almost a perfect fit, but I'm going to be sanding down on the door to make it fit perfectly. Then I'm going to mark off the second bend and bend it. Not bad for the first bend, here I go with the second. I'm using the back end of the bender because I'm bending the other way. 
The first bend would be in the way if I lay it flat on the bender on the front side. Also with the second bend, I don't want to bend too far. So taking it out to check the angle on the bend. I left the door on the car because it turned out to be a perfect work height. And here you can see it's starting to get close to the angle that we want on the second bend. Just a little bit more and we are there. Let's see how the second bend turned out. Looking pretty good and we are close to what we want. With the second bend in place, I'm gonna start cutting the square, cut out for the window and also cut out for the open mechanism. But I'm gonna keep a piece of the metal that will connect to the frame that I'm touching so that it will stiffen off the window framing. There's also a bit of rust damage on the lockbox around the locking mechanism and I'm gonna fix that by putting a plate over it and weld it, cut out for the door lock and also connect it to the piece of metal that I'm holding. So hopefully that will be a good fix, we will see. Here I'm marking out the vertical line on the window. Moving on to marking the horizontal line of the window. Then I'm going to mark out the lower end of the connecting metal. Then I'm going to mark out where I'm going to cut out for the opening mechanism. The replacement part is going to look like a T in the end, where the top of the T is the actual window framing and the bottom of the T is connected to the rest of the internal framing of the door. I always double check or triple check all my measurements or markings because I don't want to screw up and have to start all over again. Now I'm drawing out all the markings, connecting the dots, making it ready to be cut. Then it's time to start cutting.
with the final cut done, our T piece is ready. So let's test it out on the door. I think it looks really good and I'm really happy with it since it's my first ever fabrication. You can see the cutout down below for the opening mechanism. And you can see that I left a triangle just to stiffen it up even more. There's a bolt on the framing that you have to drill for. After I drilled out for the bolt, the new piece wasn't lying flat against the old internal framing. So I'm going to cut some more, both on the inside and underneath. So it lays flat against the internal framing. As it is now, it's hitting this rise in the framing and doesn't lie flat. After cutting and adjusting it a bit, it's starting to look pretty good. And now it's actually sitting in place by itself. And here you can see the final piece. Now I just need to grind off all the paint where it will connect, so I get a good connection on the weld. Since I don't have a spot welder, I'm gonna drill holes into the new piece, which allows me to spot weld. So I'm gonna drill hole up against the window framing, but I'm also gonna drill holes against the internal framing. Hopefully that will create a good and strong connection between the new and the old. So here's the final piece. I'm gonna start with some spot welds on top and on bottom. This will hold it in place. Then I'm gonna do some holes, wait a bit, then do some more. I don't want to get too much heat into the door, hoping to save the paint as much as possible. I didn't film the actual welding, but we're gonna take a look at the result after I weld it. So you can see the spot wells down the door and also around the bolt. I also added a new plate to the lockbox and connected it to the other piece. Welded them together and grinding down all the wells. Next is to cover it with the Brunox, which is a rust prohibitor. So let's take a look at the final result. Remember, this is the first time I ever worked with sheet metal. The door is looking pretty solid and I was really proud of myself. I did pretty much the same thing on the left hand side. Clearing out the rust, making a new sheet metal piece that looks like a T, which connects the window framing to the inner framing of the door. So the reason for starting with the right hand side was that it was 
much worse than the left hand side. So I knew that if I could do the right hand side, I could do the left hand side. So the left hand side is looking much better and there's much more of the old metal that can be reused. So as I said, making a piece that will connect the window framing to the internal framing of the door. Drilling holes so we can swap well around the bolt and also down the window framing. So as I was doing this, I sent a picture to uh, Eric to hear if he thought it was good enough. So this is the right hand side with multiple layers of grinnels. Thank you for watching till the end, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to hit that like button, write a comment about what you think and subscribe if you haven't yet. I'll see you in the next one.